I feel as if the number of video games I'm excited to play each year has been slowly decreasing. I don't know if it's because I've become more jaded with my views on games, or because I just expect every game to be shit nowadays. When I was younger, I remember being able to name off almost every single game that was going to be released within the next three months. Now, there's only a couple of games each year that I end up even being remotely hyped to play. So what does this have to do with Shadow Warrior 2? Well, it just so happens that this was one of the few games this year that I was truly hyped up to play. It did so by meeting a couple of criteria. One, it was going to be released on GOG, meaning it had zero DRM, and most likely a selling point of around $40. Two, it was being made by some goddamn Polacks, the same country that produced the national treasure that is The Witcher 3. And finally, the devs of this game outright denounced Denuvo, essentially stating that implementing it in the game would only cause performance issues. This 100% earned my trust and cemented them as absolutely based as fug developers. With all that information in mind, I can say that without a doubt, Shadow Warrior 2 is my favorite game to be released this year. I absolutely love this game. The game just feels so much more fun and faster than the previous one does. You feel more agile and free to move around your environments. The stamina bar has been completely removed, allowing the player to dash infinitely, as well as double jump, climb ledges, and no longer take fall damage. Skills are just simpler to use now since they're located on dedicated keys. The sword itself just feels better because of this, since sword skills only require you to move a direction while holding right click. Even the gore system has been improved, as every time you kill someone, the direction the blade was traveling causes their body to give at that angle as well. I love the expanded arsenal, I love listening to the main character banter on in cutscenes, I love the fact that the game has co-op, I love how good the randomly generated environments and overall graphics look, it's all just... it's so awesome! But, of course, I'm not just gonna sit here and do nothing but slobber all over this game's virtual wang. Nothing's perfect. Everything has problems. Which I honestly feel could be my catchphrase at this point, or something someone would write on my tombstone. There are a plethora of things that I adore about this game, but I want to talk about some of the things that it got wrong, because nothing can escape constructive criticism. So to get started, I'm just going to go and say that this game's story is completely forgettable. It has something to do with demons and powerful swords and tyrannical governments and, I don't know, the apocalypse? It's, it's it's all over the place. And yeah, I know this game's story is by no way supposed to be its selling point, but you can really just skip every cutscene and still have just as much fun playing the game without watching them. Pretty much every encounter with either a new or returning character is an exchange of banter and exposition that results in Wang receiving some quest to go somewhere and either find or kill something. This is pretty much how the entire pace of the game goes. Go to the hub world, pick up a quest, travel to an area, kill some dudes, come back and do another one. And while this may seem to sound monotonous, it doesn't entirely end up feeling that way since the core gameplay is just so fun. Which brings me to my next point, level design. So while you might not be able to tell, all of the areas in Shadow Warrior 2 are randomly generated, although not completely, because the random generation works off these large tile sets that they just sort of clump together, which means you won't find random clutter like trees and buildings clipping together randomly across the level. The original game was linear, which meant that the secrets you could find would have you explore the levels to find them off the beaten path. Since the devs can't really predict how certain levels are going to be laid out, secrets and bonuses are kind of just randomly placed inside the tile sets. And, well, the HUD doesn't really help with this at all. And again, there are parts of the HUD that I'm really glad they added, like the objective markers on screen. Since in the first game, you can end up wandering around for 30 minutes trying to find where you needed to go next, unable to spot the lightly pulsating button on the panel you needed to press. Now, I can just look in the direction I need to go, so I never end up getting lost like I did in the first game. Although, pretty much every other new addition to the HUD completely hindered the experience I had, because I eventually just turned off almost every new feature the HUD had. The minimap? Perfect example. I have never liked minimaps in video games, unless it's multiplayer. I feel like whenever I'm playing a game that has a minimap, half of my time playing that game is just spent looking at the minimap, and not the actual game. The new map in Shadow Warrior 2 just shows everything around you, so you don't even have to search for secrets, money, or ammo boxes anymore. Because of that, 
yeah, it, it was one of the features I decided to turn off really early in. Another thing about the head that I ended up not really liking was the health bars, enemy weaknesses, and just damage numbers in general. And normally I like seeing damage numbers on top of enemies. But again, I found myself looking far too much at these aspects of the HUD rather than actually focusing on aiming correctly. Having health bars and damage numbers in general made the game's enemies feel like bullet sponges on harder difficulties. Because when I turned them off on hard, I found I was just having more fun attacking enemies rather than worrying about how much health I was chipping off with each attack. Although I think the real culprit behind why the game has damage numbers, health bars, and weaknesses now is because the game changed from a linear story-based shooter to a pseudo RPG stat-based co-op shooter. Now, while I absolutely adore and love games that have co-op, having to play a game that was designed with co-op in mind alone can really hurt the experience. Now onto the final qualm I have with this game, the loot system. Shadow Warrior 2 is very akin to recent games like Destiny and The Division, or Borderlands if you want to look back a bit further. The difference here is that you don't get randomly generated weapons, instead you just get a fuckload of randomly generated gems. Every gem you pick up has a varying quality to it, in order of white, green, blue, yellow, then orange. Gems can do different things like make you reload faster, shoot electric bullets, or cause your bullets to do lifesteal damage. And in order to use gems, you socket them into one of the game's many acquirable weapons. In concept, this sounds like it would be great, but in reality, it's retarded. So you'd think that the best gems are the orange ones, right? Wrong. Most orange gems are shit because they have green and red stats, while white gems have nothing but green stats. I, I, I don't understand why they thought giving the most powerful gems negative statistics was a good idea. It's not like a co-op single player game needs to be balanced so nothing feels overpowered. Things should feel overpowered because you aren't going up against other players. You're just fighting AI and AI can't complain if something is broken. You're just having fun. And the modifier gems that let you dual wield or rapid fire, they just make guns feel worse. In Shadow Warrior 1, I never used the pistol until I had enough money left over that I didn't know what to do with. So about halfway through the game, I spent it on fully upgrading the pistol. And then it became my favorite weapon. Now, in Shadow Warrior 2, when I attach the pistol with a rapid fire or dual wield modifier, it just sucks. Cause the accuracy is just terrible. It's not fun to use. Honestly, I, I prefer the upgrade system in Shadow Warrior 1 over this gem card system that Shadow Warrior 2 has. Man, I, I practically ignored most of the orange gems that I received throughout my playthrough because I almost exclusively used these plus 11% damage white gems on almost all my swords and other weapons. The only real modifier gem I ended up using consistently was a charged shot for my shotgun. Because, oh, holy fuck, that made any weapon I put it on completely OP. It's just, like, this game has so many strange design choices that at first seemed like neat or interesting ideas, but just sort of fall flat because they make the game less fun. Although, by no means, do I think that this game is just bad because of a majority of the things I mentioned. They just, they kind of just hindered the overall enjoyment I had while playing through this game for the first time. I still think Shadow Warrior 2 is a fantastic game because its positive features heavily outweigh its negative features. It's just a damn good game. And I imagine it'd be one that's even better to play with friends.